Hi, this is one in a series of short videos made by the Imaginative Education Research Group at Simon Fraser University in Canada. We're looking at a series of learning tools that any teacher can use in their everyday classroom to make lessons more imaginatively engaging for students. And today we want to focus on heroes and heroic characteristics. What makes heroes educationally important? Well, if you think of a child of uh, eight, nine, ten, again, Father Christmas has been left behind, the tooth fairy is no longer believed in, they're engaging in a new kind of reality. For most kids, this is, in some greater or lesser degree, it creates insecurities. Um, what nearly everybody does is make an association with something or someone that is able to overcome the kinds of threats that hem them in. So the girl associates with the, the pop star because the, the, the pop star has a kind of power and um, money and freedom that the girl doesn't have. And the boy, typically, um, makes a hero of a sports star because the sports star has the strength, the skill that the boy lacks. So if you want to pause for a minute and we think about who our heroes are, it tells us a little about what we remain insecure about. So generating her heroes that we associate with is not something trivial, it's something psychologically quite profoundly important for human beings. And the trick for the teacher is to see how this can be used in making almost anything in the curriculum imaginatively engaging. This is a way of trying to look at anything or anyone um, as having heroic characteristics that the, that the student can share in and then take on themselves in some way. For example, teaching about the Industrial Revolution. Um, you know, often when people suggest that they give examples of children in coal mines and things like this because they think that the student will associate with the kid in the coal mine. But if instead you start with Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Um, Brunel um, represents the, the courage, the ingenuity, the, the sheer energy and power of the Industrial Revolution. Not that we're going to make the Industrial Revolution a good hero entirely, but rather that that's central to understanding what it's about. Brunel, for example, I tend to talk a little bit about Brunel, show a picture taken in 1850s, and Brunel looks like a stiff little Victorian. He looks like a, um, a Martian to the average kid today in schools. And, um, when, and then I just talk a little bit about the fact that Brunel built the first tunnels under the Thames in the 1850s for his underground railroad. And uh, he would have, when he got halfway through, a big banquet for the mayor of London and the MPs and the lords and ladies. But then further up the tunnel, he'd have exactly the same banquet for his workers. And he decided, uh, he, built, he built a ship um, called the Great Eastern. And the largest, they'd recently discovered the technology of building iron ships, and they'd built one of 100 tons. Brunel built the next one up in the scale. It was 22,500 tons. He decided he was going to build a... A, ra a railroad from London to Boston in the US. So he started driving out from London and built, drove through miles of solid rock and built some of the most beautiful bridges that had ever been built for railways. The Saltosh Suspension Bridge uh, over the river and the, 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 the Severn Bridge. Um, and indeed, he was on his deathbed, he was taken over the Saltosh Suspension Bridge. Uh, it's a curved bridge, very complicated, on his deathbed. So that was his great triumph. Wow. But anything he would get on his railroad, it became known as the, the Great Western Railroad, uh, known as the GWR, also known as God's Wonderful Railway. And everything he could get on the railroad to the Isle of Anglesey and the top of Wales, he was able to put on his Great Eastern ship and take it to Boston. So he built himself his Iron Railroad to Boston. Now, creating images and talking like that about this heroic character gives the kids an access to the meaning of the Industrial Revolution that is tied to these emotions, these, this heroic energy and courage um, and recklessness that was a part of what the Industrial Revolution was about. It doesn't mean that we have to represent it heroically, but rather that we begin to see those heroic features in it. And then we can, we can modify that view later, but it catches the child's imagination re quite readily. If you would like to see more examples of the use of heroes and heroic characteristics in teaching, you can go to the Imaginative Education Research Group website.